The internet is running out of water. A single medium-sized data center consumes three to four million gallons of water every day. This is as much water as three hospitals or 50,000 people living in a city would consume in 24 hours. Every third data center in the world resides in the United States, vastly more than any other country. The United States is the home of much of the internet traffic, but the United States is drying out. For 22 consecutive years, the western half of the country has been stricken by the second biggest mega drought in the past 1200 years. 47% of this drought has been caused by human activity. The region itself is 1.2 degrees Celsius warmer than it would have been otherwise. The western United States is turning into a desert. Heat waves and fire weather are aridifying all of the western US. This is Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States by water capacity. It was formed by building the Hoover Dam in the 1930s. Nowhere are the effects of aridification more visible than here. The bathtub brings you see are a memory of where the water used to be only a few years ago. In summer 2021, the water levels of Lake Mead declined to record-breaking 35% capacity. There has never been this little water in the lake since the Hoover Dam was finished in the 1930s. This is a satellite photo of Lake Mead in the year 2000, at the beginning of the current mega drought. This is what the water levels look like today. The lake is disappearing in front of everyone's eyes. Big tech companies have been endlessly praised for their efficiency and adoption of renewable energy. And they have the numbers to justify their bragging. From 2010 to 2018, the amount of data center computing workload has increased 550%. Their energy consumption has only risen by 6%. But this incredible improvement in efficiency has a hidden cost. One that the big tech companies are much less open to talk about. In the United States, data centers are consuming 1.7 billion liters of water every day, compared to the total daily water consumption of over 12,000 billion liters, that's less than a 0.14%. It sounds like a negligible amount. But this number is less than a tip of an iceberg. Only one-third of data center operators are measuring their water consumption, and the water that gets measured is only the one used directly for cooling. So if we look at the numbers that the big data companies want us to see, this is how much water data centers use for cooling in the United States. But this is how much water they use indirectly for non-renewable electricity generation. If data center cooling doesn't put too much stress on local watersheds, their energy consumption almost certainly does. The location of data centers is crucial in understanding their total water impact. To ensure fast and stable services, data centers are built close to population centers because that's where their customers are. In many places, data center water demands put too much additional stress on local reservoirs already in risk of depletion. Every fifth data center resides close to water sources that are moderately or highly stressed. And nearly half of data centers are fully or partially powered by plants residing in water stressed regions. When operators tackle the issue of cooling, they can choose from two options. They can go for air cooling, which is energy intensive but doesn't require a lot of water or they can choose evaporative cooling, which does use a lot of water, but saves electricity and carbon neutral goals are easier to reach. For most data center operations, the choice is clear. Even in the most arid and water stress regions, evaporative cooling is going to be cheaper, even if it means tapping into declining reservoirs of fresh water. About 57% of water used for data center cooling is coming from potable water sources that are shared with agriculture, cities, and households. While many companies will point to fringe cases of using sewage, recycled, or seawater for cooling, these are often only rare experiments with little hope for scalability. In Arizona, one of the states dependent on Lake Mead and the Colorado River, the data center industry is booming. 
the state decided to become the next hub of the silicon tech and began enacting policies to attract big investments. Companies are promised millions in tax credits and easy access to fresh water for cooling if they settle in their business parks. This is what attracted Apple, Google, Facebook and many others to expand their operation in one of the hottest and driest states in the country. But the people of Arizona are already paying the price. In Chandler, a single data center consumes all the water allocated to the entire business park, forcing everyone else to find water elsewhere or settle for other cooling methods. Arizonians are beginning to worry as the Colorado River Basin lost 18% of its flow, threatening water security in the state. People are complaining that data centers are not sustainable as households are told to reduce their water usage. The state is losing the battle to conserve their water, as their efforts will fail to achieve the safe yield by 2024. Too many new users are allowed to pump groundwater, while the demand for surface water is increasing beyond sustainable levels. The situation has escalated so fast, there are calls to ban new data center development in the region. Texas is another example of data centers exhausting local water resources. In Red Oak, Google is requesting 1.46 billion gallons of water a year for their new data center. The Elise County, which includes Red Oak and 20 other towns, consumes about 15 billion gallons. So a single Google data center requires roughly 10% of all the allocated water in the region. This isn't a unique case. In South Carolina, Google also draws about one-tenth of the total 40 million gallon daily surface water allocation for their only data center in the state. The three counties around Charleston also pump over 11 million gallons per day from a local aquifer, from which Google requested to pump additional 1.5 million gallons. The local utility eventually had to deny Google's request for the aquifer because the water from the underground reservoir is already depleting. Much of this reporting is shrouded in secrecy. While some big tech companies are boasting green technology, they are silent on their water consumption. Neither Google nor Microsoft attribute their water consumption to data centers, and they only report on water use for cooling, not energy generation. Amazon, for a change, doesn't publish water figures at all. When Google struck a deal with the small city council in Oregon to build two more data centers, how much water they would use remained confidential. Why? Because Google considers their water consumption a trade secret. They will sue anyone trying to disclose it. In South Carolina, Google put the local water utility under a non-disclosure agreement to keep them quiet about their usage. In Arizona, Facebook negotiated a deal under a covert limited liability company and signed an NDA with the city council to prevent the public from learning about Facebook's water usage. It was only revealed by an analysis of circumstantial evidence and confirmed by an anonymous source that Facebook was indeed behind the LLC. Data center operators know they are threatening water security in the regions they operate in, yet they proceed regardless. When Red Oak Water Utility refused to provide the amount of water Google requested, the tech giant filed a petition to remove their federal right to be the sole water supplier. The six Dallas reservoirs are already 18% depleted, which is more than halfway through reaching mandatory water restrictions. And while Google was granted more withdrawals, the local public utility was asked to reduce theirs by 57%. In aquifers of South Carolina and Oregon, water is already declining faster than it can be naturally replenished. And while the South Carolina utility rejected additional requests for the local groundwater, Oregon did not. The city council in Oregon approved Google's proposal, despite the fact last summer the region endured its record high temperatures and extreme drought. The demand of the cloud technology is only going to increase. The number of hyperscale data centers have more than tripled since 2012. The internet traffic is expected to double by 2022, and when 5.3 billion people have internet access by 2023, the number of connected devices will reach 29.3 billion. The total energy consumption of data centers went from nothing 10 years ago to about 3% a day. That's more electricity than the entire consumption of the United Kingdom. In Japan, data centers will consume the country's entire electricity supply by 2030 if the growth continues at today's rate, and the trend will continue. Experts are warning that energy efficiency of data centers is hitting a ceiling. 
The vast majority of data center capacity is taken by computation and industry heavy tasks such as machine learning and AI development. Video streaming and social networking are inconsequential by comparison. These computational intensive tasks and their rapid expansion could lead to a tenfold increase in the data center's share of global carbon emissions by 2040. Data is the new oil. This analogy is becoming tragically more accurate. The massive data collection by the advertising industry and the drive to push AI into every decision-making process of our lives to boost profits is costing us the most precious resource on this planet. The price of water is inflating faster than any other commodity, and without addressing this problem systemically, no price tag will be high enough in the coming water scarcity. Google and Microsoft are pledging to be water positive and replenish 120% of the water they consume by 2030. They want to do this by restoring wetlands or removing impervious surfaces. But these initiatives are non-biting, their water numbers ignore the vast majority of their consumption coming from electricity generation, and restoring wetlands may do little to restore thousand-year-old water reservoirs. Microsoft recently succeeded in submerging their data center under the ocean, and while it proved effective, it is not a scalable solution meaning it won't be adopted beyond small, critical projects. Mandatory restrictions and rationing are inevitable at this point. Your internet usage might soon be tied to water consumption and your bandwidth will be limited. Learning how to minimize your data footprint by protecting your privacy now could be more relevant than ever. Avoiding services that collect your information to feed algorithms or use AI might be the first steps you can take right now. And since many decisions on data center development are made locally, direct political engagement is also necessary. Mass surveillance and the ad industry based on it will need to be abolished. Over the years, I've made plenty of tutorials on privacy, anonymity, and security, and following them can help you significantly limit your data exposure. You can share this video and watch it without ads and AI trackers on NewPipe or Nvidia's. This hurts me financially, yes, but there is still my Patreon with tons of additional content for you to support me. If you've made it this far into the video, you're already helping a lot. Thank you.